Hello! Today we are moving into stage five and it's always a really fun and exciting stage because you get to add things like fruits to the fresh juices, uh, cooked fruit, starting with apple puree, and then raw vegetables. So I'm gonna take you through add, and just show you what it looks like as we start adding each of these things. This is another transition where you're challenging the digestive system, seeing if it's ready for, for fruit in these different forms, for raw vegetables, things like that. So anytime you're gonna see like diarrhea return or cramping, abdominal pain, yeast, symptoms of yeast being fed from the sweet fruit and things like that, that would be a sign that you're not quite ready. You need to back up and then that's why these last intro stages are called the dance because it's very very common it's typically what people do is to dance between stage to, to stage for a little bit so move forward a little bit try it out oh gotta move back move forward okay this time we can do it move forward okay try to move forward a little bit more oh not yet move back so it's a dance it's that's the way it is okay so let me show you our juice today so we're doing uh pineapple dr natasha recommends adding things like apple, pineapple, mango. She says avoid citrus fruits for now, but we're gonna do the same carrot, celery, and mint leaves for our juice, and then also add pineapple this time. So we're gonna get started making that. So I'm whisking in some cultured cream, kefir cultured cream again, just to add some healthy fat as well as probiotics. And then we are gonna enjoy this on our empty stomach first thing this morning. So yummy. So for our stage five breakfast today, we're doing more scrambled eggs. There's bacon that hasn't quite come out of the oven yet. Sauerkraut. Our meat stock is still heating up on the stove. And then we're enjoying another fun little thing, which is salmon eggs. My kids really, really like these. This is another really nutrient dense thing that is full of those essential fatty acids and omegas that are really, really helpful. And so we are enjoying these as often as we can. What did you say? I love fish balls. You love fish balls? Oh, good. You want some more? Yeah, I love fish balls. Oh, you want a lot? Okay. Three. All right. Okay, so for today's stage five lunch, we are doing broccoli blended soup. So to make this, I just cut the broccoli florets off of the stalk. And then, of course, depending on how digestion is, you want to make sure that you really trim away anything that's going to be too fibrous. For us, I just did this, so they're all just the, the smaller florets. And then I'm going to be making this with some chicken meat stock. So this is chicken meat stock that I actually have left that I strained out from when we made the chicken stew before. And you can see when we did that concentration of a pint of water per pound of meat bones for those chicken thighs, it did turn out a lot more jelly. So different cuts do better with different concentrations, just depends on how much uh, collagen and connective tissue is in the cut that you're using. And then I'm also putting these soft connective tissue pieces and skin with some of the meat stock in the blender. I'm going to blend that up and add that along with the meat stock into my pot. I'm going to bring that up to a boil, let it simmer until the broccoli florets are nice and soft. And then I'm going to blend that up with my immersion blender. And then I'll show you how we're going to serve this. It is pouring down rain outside. We had a big thunderstorm with massive thunder and then just big downpour. Looks like it's gonna blow over though pretty soon.
Oh, I'm just stirring those egg yolks in. I tried to show there how I like to take the yolk and then just break that membrane around the yolk and get just the inner part because when I'm eating soup, I don't like to find weird textures and stuff in there. <laughs> so that's just what I do. If I'm making something like Russian custard or ice cream where I'm really gonna whip the ingredients together, then the little membranes and everything get all whipped up and it doesn't matter. But for something like this, I like to take just the inner part of the yolk out. And that would go for somebody who knew that they were possibly sensitive to the white but not the yolk. If you wanted to be really careful about separating your yolks, that would be a good way to do it. To actually take the yolk, wash it in water, and then carefully pierce it and get just the inside out and not use that membrane. So then I'm also adding some ghee for some additional animal fat. Stir that in. And then some cultured cream. I'll try to do this with one hand as best I can. That's the probiotic food for this meal. And then Okay guys, I just dropped my phone and the microphone in the soup. Okay, we are back after that disaster. I'm not too worried about the phone, but the microphone I'm pretty sure was not supposed to be submerged and so I've got to let that dry so I'm now I'm recording without a microphone so uh, anyway the last thing that I'm adding here is um, some olive oil just to keep continuing that on a regular basis I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle some of that you know adding all of these things after we know that the soup has cooled down enough to be able to add things like egg yolks and probiotic food and the olive oil. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and enjoy that. And then we also have some of our gap spread here along the side. So for my kids, I'm gonna do one of those things like, okay, when your soup is gone, then you get to have some gap spread, you know, just using that order whenever possible. Okay, so our next food that we're gonna be adding on stage five is cooked fruit. And Dr. Natasha recommends cooked apples as being a good one to start with and so I am coring and peeling some apples with my KitchenAid attachment here makes it really fast and easy although I've done this by hand plenty of times as well and so I'm just gonna add about an inch or so of water in the bottom of the pan once I have all the apples in there I'm going to bring it up to a boil let them simmer until they're nice and soft and then I'm going to blend them up I'm gonna add plenty of fat I'm probably gonna add all the rest of the ghee that is in that jar over there and then we're going to enjoy these so this is another one of those things where you have to be really careful this is the first time we've actually introduced you know fruit you know on its own as far as going through these intro stages and so this is another really good indication of whether or not the body is ready to have this if old symptoms are coming back and there's symptoms of yeast really being fed then that's a sign that you're not ready so again with those dance intro stages stages three to six of intro are the dance we're going a little forward a little bit back testing things out going back when we need to that's all good so we just try it see if we're ready if not back up and then try again a little bit later so i'll show you the process of making these and then serving them up Okay, so we're gonna enjoy it in these little cups. So it's important to start with just a very small amount when you're first starting this, when you're going through those intro stages and adding this for the first time, just a little bit, like a mouthful, a couple mouthfuls, three mouthfuls, something like that. And then watch, see how you do. Your body will let you know if you're not ready with either diarrhea or constipation or cramping or bloating. And then, like I said, 
that's your sign to back up just you know go back to the previous stage let some more healing happen and then after a while try again and then you're oftentimes able to move forward after just a bit more healing so we're gonna go ahead and enjoy this we are having it in between meals dr natasha recommends having fruit in between meals because it digests a lot quicker than things like meat um, and so it just oftentimes will be better tolerated if it's on its own in your digestive tract rather than with another meal. So there are some exceptions, like avocado is good with meat and things. Avocado is, is technically a fruit. And then um, hopefully you saw how much fat I put in there. I put quite a lot of ghee in there and blended it in. And it's really important to have plenty of fat when you're having something sweet like fruit because fat is really important for keeping the blood sugar stabilized when you're having a sweet food like that. So that is our cooked apples and we're going to go ahead and enjoy those. For dinner tonight, we're going to do some meatballs cooked in the oven. So I have some grass-fed ground beef here. I added some mineral salt, ground black pepper, some eggs. I like to do about one egg per pound of ground beef some chopped up onion and garlic so i'm going to form these into meatballs and bake them in a 400 degree fahrenheit oven for about 22 to 25 minutes or so i'm also going to saute some green beans in some uh, butter we've moved from ghee to butter by now and then we're going to have these with meat stock and sauerkraut on the side and then as our last part of stage five we're also going to be having some raw vegetables so we're going to have some raw peeled cucumber, and then also some tomatoes. So again, when you're going through the stages um, and dealing with health issues and different things, you'd wanna add those one at a time, just a little bit of peeled cucumber. See how you do, wait a few days, make sure no old symptoms or digestive symptoms are coming back, and then go ahead and have some more and try some other raw vegetables, starting with very soft ones, like the peeled cucumber, soft lettuces, and things like that. And you can go ahead and try things like tomatoes if you don't have any concerns about nightshades as you're testing out different raw vegetables as well. So I'll show you putting all this together and then serving it up. So the meatballs are in the oven, green beans are sauteing in butter. I'm gonna heat up this wonderful meat stock and peeling some cucumbers. And here it is all served up. So we have the meatballs, the raw vegetables, some cooked vegetables, fermented vegetables, and then our meat stock over here. And then for dessert, we're gonna be doing our egg yolks part of our egg yolks for the day as Russian custard. We'll do that a little bit later. Also this evening, I'm going ahead and starting another batch of meat stock. So like I've talked about, you as you get into the hang of this, you get into a rhythm and you start figuring out, okay, when do I wanna just make a big dedicated batch of meat stock? So I, I have a bunch of jars of it on hand or whatever. So you, you can have mugs of it and you can make other soups with it, that kind of thing versus, okay, when do I just wanna make a meal? So like meaty bone, a big thing of meaty bone that has a lot of meat on it with my vegetables, and then that's just gonna be our dinner. And then meat stock is made with that, you know? So you figure out your balance and, and you figure out, okay, today it's gonna to be this kind of a day, this day is gonna be another kind of day. And you just kind of get into that rhythm of, now it's time to make another big meat stock batch like this. So anyway, um, I have, this time some chicken necks down there. I also have some chicken feet and then chicken drumsticks. So the feet and necks are my favorite way and the way that I usually make chicken meat stock. And so that's when you get a lot nicer gel to your meat stock when it's chilled, when you have things like chicken feet and chicken necks. The drumsticks actually are also really good for that too, but I didn't have any of the chicken feet or necks on hand when I made that other batch that you saw earlier with just the chicken thighs and so that's one of the reasons why that one didn't gel up quite so much but like I said before it's fine it's just a little more diluted and it all works out you did see after that that I had the pork meat stock that gelled extra extra well so you know it all works out but anyway I'm putting this together tonight the same evening 
I am tossing in some onion, some carrots. I just cut the carrots and celery really big because I'm just trying to just get a nice big batch of meat stock going kind of quickly here. So just adding those in there and then I have garlic set out to remind me that I want to press that in there at the end of the cook time. So I'm going to add some mineral salt to this. I'm going to add some ground pepper because we're advanced into the stages to where we're having ground pepper. And then filtered water to cover everything. Bring it up to a boil, let it simmer for two, two and a half hours or so. And then I'll put the garlic in, let it cool a little bit, strain it and store it into jars. And then here's our Russian custard that we're having after dinner to get in the rest of our egg yolks, as well as just being a really nice, delicious treat. So I separated out all the drumsticks and the carrots here so that we can use those for eating. And then I'm straining the meat stock into here. So this is just another one of those ways that you can make meat stock without using a whole chicken. So you can use the drumsticks when possible. I always like to use those feet and necks because they really add the gelatin properties and collagen properties to the finished meat stock. And um, I do have other videos on YouTube where I show making meat stock with a whole chicken, and I will do that often. I still like adding extra feet whenever I do whole chickens, as well as extra heads when we save them from our own meat chickens when we process those. So, yep, there's another nice batch of meat stock ready to go. Hello, so today we are moving to stage six. And there's really just one key food for that, which is adding some raw peeled fruit. So apple, raw peeled apple is the first one to start with. And so I'll show you that a little bit later. For right now, we're gonna do some breakfast. So I'll show, show you what we're doing today. We're starting out with the fresh pressed juices. So I have it here. It's the same that we did, that I showed you before, the carrot, celery, mint, and pineapple with some cultured cream mixed in. Looks like I need to mix that a little bit better. So I'm gonna divide this among people. We're gonna drink that. And then we are also working on making some scrambled eggs, some of the zucchini nut butter egg pancakes. We have some bacon, and then also I'm going to heat up some meat stock and we're gonna have that with sauerkraut. So I'll show you everything once it's served up. I also wanted to show this last most recent batch of chicken meat stock that I made. See how nice? Just blocked out. You can still see the shape of the bottom of the jar there. Nice and gelatinous and collagen rich. See what a difference having those chicken necks and especially the chicken feet make? So I highly recommend anytime you can get chicken feet, pieces like that to add, they really make a difference. So here is breakfast all served up. So we're doing the squash, nut butter, egg pancakes. This is not the most beautiful representation of them, but that is what they are. We're also having some bacon, some sauerkraut, and then continuing on those previous foods on a regular basis, like I talked about. We're also including some avocado, and then we have meat stock on the side. So the next food that we're introducing on stage five is raw fruit. So Dr. Natasha recommends this as raw peeled apple the first time and you want to go just like with everything else new go very slowly the first time that you try it just start like maybe with a bite or two 
and then wait a few days, see how you do, make sure that you're not getting old symptoms coming back or symptoms of yeast being fed. And if everything seems okay, then you can go ahead and include a little bit more next time and then just keep watching. Fruit is one of those things where it'll let you tell really quickly whether or not you're ready to have it or not. And it's really fun to get to start adding it, but it is also important to only add it when you're ready. And then after you're doing well with peeled apple, peeled raw apple, then you can try other peeled fruits and then gradually try other ones with the peel, just watching to make sure that the digestion is still good and no old symptoms are coming back. Okay, so then that is stage six, introducing raw fruit. And then the other part of stage six is just gradually testing out different sweet items on gaps like the other baking that can be sweet, the gaps desserts, all of those things. And then you are in full gaps. So full gaps means to be able to have that all that variety that is available to you on the full gaps diet. So things like cheese and different things like that, you can now start testing out and trying depending on your individual situation, of course. And then there are some things to remember to make sure that you're doing full gaps the right way. So it's not just let's now copy our old way of eating or the standard American diet with GAPS versions of foods. You're not gonna see the same results if you try to eat that way. So what I recommend is to make sure that you're always including the foods that are the heart of GAPS while you're on full GAPS, while at the same time enjoying that full variety that you have. So the heart of foods are gonna be that daily meat stock. So you need to be having meat stock at least once a day the entire time that you're on full GAPS. Dr. Natasha says to make sure you're having at least a cup of meat stocks and soups while you're on full gaps. I usually aim for a bit more than a cup, but a, one cup would be like your bare minimum for every day. And then you wanna make sure that while you're on full gaps, you're not going overboard with the fruit and the desserts and the treats and those kinds of things. You wanna make sure that most of your food by far is savory. So things like meat, fat, eggs, um, the soups and stews, vegetables, those are going to be your friend. And then save fruits and nuts and treats and different things like that for just now and then for treats. You also want to make sure while you're on full gaps to make sure that you're including all of those things that you have worked in and added as you went through those intro stages. So things like your avocado, your olive oil, your um, egg yolks, making sure I find that people do best when they continue to have at least some of their egg yolks raw every day on gaps. You want to make sure to keep including those organ meats and additional animal fat on a very regular basis. Those are some of the biggest ones to ensure that you're continuing to see progress while you're on full gaps. And then another big one is making sure to continue those fermented foods with every meal while you're on full gaps. And if you can have more of a variety of fermented foods, that's even better. So cultured dairy, fermented vegetables of different kinds. You can try fermenting fruits. Um, I showed how you can ferment meat for a little bit before putting it to cook. Just ferment everything. The bigger the variety, the better, because the more friendly probiotic bacteria you're getting in, which is only helpful. So yeah, that is it. That is our journey through GAPS intro. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the rest of our meals today as we finish out stage six. For lunch today, we are reheating some soups. We have a little bit of some blended carrot soup that people really liked, so there I didn't want to toss that out. So we're reheating that, and then the broccoli soup. And then we also have leftover meatballs from last night as well. So we'll be serving this with probiotic food, either sauerkraut or cultured cream, whichever people like, additional animal fat. And we may drizzle some olive oil in there again as well, and enjoying that. And that's what we're doing for lunch. Mm hmm. For dinner tonight, we're doing something a little bit different because we want to go eat at a lake because it's hot out, so we want to swim at the lake and things like that and bring our dinner along. And so we are going to bring on, bring along some pate, so the liver pate that I showed. And to eat that with, since we have raw vegetables now, I made these. So if you cut a carrot on an angle like that, you get a nice big wide dipping surface so you can use these as chips we have cucumber slices so we're going to dip these in the pate and eat that at the lake and then so in the cooler bag here i have the container of pate which we'll just dip out into individual bowls and then people will use the little sliced vegetables to dip the pate with and eat it we have the fermented pickles we're bringing along for our fermented food 
And then for our meat stock for the evening meal, we're actually gonna go ahead and just have that right before we leave for the lake. Cause you could heat it up and bring it in a thermos and then drink it at the lake. That's doable when we've done things like that before, but it's a little bit easier to not have to worry about that. So we're all just gonna have our cups of meat stock right before we leave and then eat the rest of our dinner on the lake. And then when we come home, we are going to have some more homemade ice cream with our kefir cultured cream and egg yolks to get in some more egg yolks for the day. Show you that when we make that. While they're eating their pate. Good job, guys. All right, so that concludes our journey through GAP's intro. I really hope that you enjoyed coming along. I hope that you found it helpful. I thought it was really fun to be able to document it, and I know that the first time I went through intro, that would have been so useful to have something like that. So I hope that a lot of people find that very interesting and hopefully helpful as well. And then like I've mentioned a few different times, the journey through GAP's intro is very, very personalized and individual and it can be very nuanced depending on different people's situations and sometimes having another person to kind of give some feedback and ideas uh, especially if you're feeling stuck or you're not sure not sure what to do in a certain situation working with a gaps professional can be really helpful and i work with people i have information on how you can work with me down in in the description box below if you're interested in checking that out i also have a meal plan for GAPS intro down below, as well as a more a gradual step-by-step -step transition into first Weston A. Price or Wise Tradition style eating and then into full GAPS if you're wanting a very gentle and gradual approach. There's that option as well. I also have some free GAPS diet resources, like I mentioned, that I'll have down in the description box so you can check those out. And then I have lots and lots of recipe videos, videos talking about GAPS, lots of GAPS content on my YouTube channel and my website, bumblebeeapothecary.com. So definitely go and check out any of those that are of interest to you. And I'm also really glad that we went through GAPS intro again. It's always a really, really nice reset. No matter how many times you've already been through it, just going through it again, even if you do it quickly like we have and it hasn't been and you've already done it before and this isn't your first time, just going through it is always such a nice reset. It just gives you a better appreciation for those foods. It just kind of renews your interest in those really healing, nourishing key foods. It also just, just resets everything. It just gets rid of sugar cravings, carb cravings, and it just kind of reminds you of what's, what's really good when it comes to food. So I'm really glad that we did it and I hope that you enjoyed coming along. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it interesting or helpful, and if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.